I'd like for you all to think about your middle school self. Who were you in sixth, seventh, or even eighth grade? What were you like? What did you want to be? Now, whether those middle school memories are fond ones, or whether you're quietly cringing on the inside, I think we all could agree that we've evolved since then. And the person we were in middle school is not the person we are today. However, I'd like to share a story with you about a conversation that I had in middle school that's helped to shape who I am in my profession. When I was in middle school, <laughs> my very favorite teacher told me, you are gonna be an English teacher one day. To which I thoughtfully replied, as any middle schooler might, um, no, <laughs> why would anyone want to do that? And yet, here I am today, citing teacher as the profession of my tax forms nearly 20 years later. Now, seventh grade me was wrong about a lot of things, including my romantic future as Mrs. Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> but I was onto something back in 1998 when I said I didn't want to be a teacher. And guess what? I don't think anyone should want to be a teacher today. Now, don't get me wrong. My profession is not just what I do. It is truly who I am. Yet, the word teach means to show or explain, to give information. Yet, thanks to the changing landscape of the information age, that's not what my students need. And so that's not what I do. Being a teacher today simply isn't enough. And I'd like to help you see why. We're gonna play a little game, okay? Just by a show of hands, I'd like to see who knows the answers to the questions I'm about to ask. Are you ready? Okay, first question. How many lines, or how many syllables, make up the second line in a haiku? The answer, it's seven. Okay, next question. What is the only body part that stays largely the same size since from the time that we're born until the time we die. This one, it's the eyeball. Okay, last question. What's the name of a phase between the half and the full moon called? The answer, it's the gibbous. Now, if the answers to those common knowledge questions didn't feel so common to you, rest assured that the answers are a lot closer than they appear and it's not because I wrote the answer key. You have the answer in your back pocket, your purse, your backpack, and maybe even in the palm of your hand. And our students do too. Thanks to tools like Siri, Alexa, Google, and even YouTube, we have access to a wealth of information. And in fact, our students have more information at their disposal than an arsenal of textbooks and lectures could ever provide. So the question we have to ask ourselves now is, if students have all the answers, then what is our role? Oops. Consider for a fact that Google processes nearly 3.5 million searches per day and 1.2 trillion searches per year worldwide. That's a lot of information. Think about the last time you looked something up online. It might have even been this morning. And it doesn't stop there. Our internet searches are not limited to simple recitations of fact. Consider that YouTube has, processed a, has seen a 70% growth of searches of how-to videos in recent years. So when we look up things like how to fold a fitted sheet, how to unclog a toilet, <laughs> or how to give a really great TEDx talk. <laughs> Our students are looking up things just as much. So, as I mentioned, if our students have all the information, and what is our role? What is my job? I am not Google, and I am most certainly not YouTube. So who am I? What is my job today? Well, the critical component here is that today's teachers really need to stop teaching. We are no longer the esteemed keepers of knowledge we once were. 
and we need to stop acting like we have all the answers. In fact, thanks to the internet, anyone with decent cell service has access to information and the world at their fingertips. And if that's the case, then teaching isn't doing our students any service. Instead, we need to help our students navigate, discern, analyze, and respond to the world that's around them. And in doing so, we are better preparing our students for the future. Consider that many schools promote the idea of college and career readiness. However, is that really what we should be preparing our students for? More school? Work? Is that the end goal? Perhaps we should be preparing our students for more, for life, for example. Yet, we all know that life isn't limited to the pages of a textbook. And just like parenting, there is no owner's manual for adulting. The challenges we're faced with every day involve things like teamwork, critical thinking, and creative problem solving. And so we need to help our students experience those challenges in our classrooms. We need to start putting an emphasis on the process of thought versus simply focusing on remembering or knowing facts and figures. If we continue to encourage our students to think, then that means that everyone is a learner. Everyone is smart, and everyone can be successful, not just in our classrooms, but in our world. Teachers need to realize that we are no longer the captains of our classrooms. Instead, our role has shifted. We need to become the compass, acknowledging that the world is the wind, but our students need to captain themselves to determine when they've run off course and how to get back on track. However, if we continue to limit ourselves and our students based on what they know, we are then limiting their thinking and any hope we have of igniting our world for change in the future. Thank you.